Hello, all you beautiful people. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to be taking a look at a, a very basic DHCP configuration. I'm going to show you some cool DHCP tricks that you can do, in, including like, you know, a quick, cheap and easy method of uh, disabling clients by default and only enabling them as you add them. Um, so yeah, don't forget to, if you guys enjoy my content, please like, subscribe and share and leave your comments below asking me whatever you want, because that's how I get ideas for content. And uh, if you need clarification on things, I will also help clarify things in the comments below and we also, of course have a patreon that really helps the channel out as well by the way so links in the description so let's get started all right so what i've done here is in gns3 i have created a gateway just using regular microtech i've added, added a generic switch and i've added a bunch of virtual pcs yeah all right what are we going to do here first of all we're in the microtech right here so i'm going to create a dhcp server using the dhcp setup wizard i'm going to show you a little caveat all right so we'll do a dhcp setup here on ethernet 2 which is the one that's going to the switch there's our subnet right there. Now you have to be careful if you have multiple IP addresses on uh, an interface, you should double check this DHCP address space and make sure that you're using the subnet that you're planning to. Okay, remember that. Um, there we go, there's the gateway, so I'm verifying that. Uh, addresses to give out is 2 to 254, that's pretty self-explanatory. And DNS servers, I'm just gonna give it whatever. I mean, like, now here's here's where the caveat comes in. You should always double check your settings because uh, with Microtik, they have a tendency of not retaining. It'll make a liar to me, watch. Uh, it did at that time. In a lot of cases, randomly, the DNS servers won't apply and you'll have to actually create them. All right, so we've created our DHCP server now. All right, now what I like to do as well is I like to label this. So we'll call this one customer NAT as an example. And then I will go to IP pool and let's label this one customer NAT as well, just to make it very easy and simple to uh, locate, to understand, whatever. All right, so here we go. Leases. Okay, let's go into the console here now and I've got one of these guys up. There we go, we've got a lease. How handy is that? I'm gonna add another one. Let's see here, console, console, <sighs> console. There we go. I'll just do DHCP on all of them. That way they'll all pull IP addresses, right? Well, they should. I mean, like, who the fuck am I to know? All right, so there we go, we've got them. So these are our leases in here. Now I'm gonna show you something else. Um, see how they're all getting their 10 dot IPs? Watch this. I can create a uh, fake pool. So I can go IP pool and I'll create dud. No fucking good offline. And why don't we do this? Now we're not actually uh, putting this, these IPs on an interface. We're basically just creating pool here. A false pool, right? Like so. And the whole purpose of these guys is to give out false IP addresses so that these things get false IPs first. Now watch this. We'll go to DHCP. Now remember, I'm not adding, you're not adding that dud pool to your interfaces because there's no point. You're basically creating a pool that the DHCP server will hand out by default. That's no good. And you can do static only, but I'll show you the handy thing about doing it this way. We'll go to the back to the lease table here. And let's see if I can do DHCP again. There we go. Can I put these in order? Oh my God, my, this is going to make my OCD just scream there. Okay. So now these guys are all getting the wrong IP addresses. These IPs will not fucking work because, well, looky here. Beep, 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 beep. If we go to IP addresses like so, see here, you'll see that the IPs that we're handing out, there is no subnet for that. It just doesn't exist. So now let's do this. Let's pick this one and I'm just going to arbitrarily make it static. So we'll go make static, right? And we'll call this one PC4. Okay, so now we've got this here. Now this is the cool part. I can go to the IP address here and go CXNAT. And now it's gonna pull an IP address in the appropriate pool. And if we scroll down a little bit, I also have the ability to block ad access to that MAC address. And on top of that, uh, I can also rate limit upload, download. So I can say, make this uh, 10 meg by 50 meg, right? And now when I save this, like so, when we refresh the IP address on this one, oh, active host name is PC31. <laughs> Let's fix that. There we go. I didn't even see the host names here because I'm stupid. DHCP. Let's refresh that IP address. Look at that. The cool thing about this method is that any device that connects to this uh, broadcast domain, this interface per se, is going to get the wrong IP address. So it'll show up in the lease table. So you'll be able to pick and choose and do things with them, right? That's the benefit of doing this. So when they connect, their IP is useless. They'll be confused. They can't see anything. They're not going to know why they can't connect. They're just going to be like, well, this IP doesn't work. Unless it's somebody who's tech savvy and they're like, oh, that's a loopback IP. I wonder what the real IP address is. And then they start sniffing around and they might find it, okay? But this is just simple DHCP auth, okay? So now these guys are getting this IP address. And alternatively, if you watch my um, how to distribute public IP addresses internally video, it'll show the, that under the address thing here, you can actually put in a custom IP address. And I explain all that in that video. So I'm not going into details on that one. So let's pick another one. Let's pick uh, PC21, make static, cool. All right, comment, PC2, yay. Okay, so let's go to this guy now. The same thing, let's go CXNAT. 
There we go. So now it's going to pull an IP address from the CX NAT pool, right? And I can scroll down here and let's set the speed on it. So let's go 25 megs by 100 meg. So upload, download, right? Just like that. Apply. Cool. So now let's go to this and, oh, let me th explain something here because, you know, I want to be thorough. So if you look here, this column here, address, represents their current IP address. Or sorry, back that up. This address column here represents the IP address that they're supposed to be getting, what has been assigned to them. In this case, dynamically, if you look at the D, D does not stand for dick. It stands, or double penetration. It stands for dynamic. See, hover over it, dynamic. So that being said, it's saying that the DHCP server has determined that they're gonna give out these IP addresses to these MAC addresses, right? But if you look down here, see how it says CX NAT? That's because we told it to pull from that pool. Now, if you look over to this column here, here's a great example. Active address means that the that's just uh, demonstrating the IP address or showing the IP address um, that the device has now gotten from the DHCP server. So active address, it's the IP address that has been given to the device, has been received by the, uh, the device, is running on the device by the DHCP server. Address column here represents what it should be getting, what the DHCP server is determining that it wants to give um, that client unit, that client device. So if we look here, you're going to see that there's five minutes counting and this, this one still has a funny IP address. That's because when this timer hits zero, that's when the server has told the the device, the client device here, PC2, to pull a brand new IP address, okay? So the device, when it talks to the server, looks at the lease times and it says, oh, the server wants me to ask for a new lease in 10 minutes. Cool, I'll do that. So it calls back in 10 minutes again and renegotiates and then the server will say, oh, this guy's supposed to be getting an IP address out of the CXNAT pool as we've selected here, right? See, because you can choose a pool or you can choose an IP address. That being said, it's going to pull an IP address, probably .253 looking at this IP address because it's counting down and it's going to give it to that. Now let's do another one. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to double click on it this time. Make static. All right. We're going to double click on it again. Go to address, change that to CX. Now put a comment on it. What is this one? PC1. Cool. I like to label these things. I usually put the customer's first and last name. Like we can go Howard, Dern. I don't know. How about, uh, I don't know. There we go. We'll do that. There we go. So we've given it that. We're going to set the speed on it here. We're going to go, uh, let's let's go crazy this time. Let's go 100 meg by 300 meg. Okay. And now let's go over to Modest Masorgsky. And we're going to, that's a Easter egg, by the way. One of my favorite artists, composers. Watch that. Ah, look, now that it's pulled in a new IP address, it's gotten that. Oh, PC2. What's going on with PC2? It's waiting to pull a new IP address. It has not done so yet. Hmm. I think because this uh, virtual PC doesn't have an automated client so I just refreshed and it's pulled it again let's do one more okay make static okay double click comment we'll call this one the unsinkable Tito taco destroyer there we go all right I want Tito to destroy my taco fuck yeah all right so rate limit let's do uh, a little modest package here one meg by ten meg there we go apply and we're gonna tell it to pull from CX NAT instead no problem. Now let's go to PC1 here. Refresh the IP address. We're asking for a new IP. There we go. Oh, it's trying to. There we go. What's this? PC1. Oh, sorry. That's supposed to be PC4. Dumb brain. There we go. Ha 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 ha. I've pulled the IP address. It sounds like dinner's ready. Let me just check my cell phone. Da, 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 da. Cool. So that's all there is right there. So that's basically, that's the gist of seeing the DHCP server, by the way. Any alerts like rogue DHCP servers or issues with um, devices or whatever will show up in here. Yeah. You do some neat stuff like that. Now, let me show you something really neat. You see how we put queues in these? Like we've put, uh, we've utilized the queue uh, space right here, right? Watch this. If you look under queues now, there's your queue entries. And see the D? It's got the D. D for dynamic, that is. Dirty. <laughs> Demeaning, degrading, demini dimini diminishing, diminutive. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Deficit of attention. Yes. So here we go. So look here. You see the dynamic entries there? Now, if I was to just uh, turn these guys off as an example, you'll see all those go away. I turn it back on. Now, if I go in here and I refresh the lease, you'll see the queues populate now. Kind of neat, eh? Oh, what are you doing here? This is a microtick bug. Unless the MAC address changed. Shouldn't have, though. There we go. Now it's working. It's probably a virtual machine bug. Yeah, look. That's weird. Oh, I'll show you how to fix this, by the way. Uh, the way that you fix this is conflict detection. All right. So if you see that you're getting zero, zero, zero leases in there, it's easy to fix. You just go to conflict detection and I'll fix that for you. That is a micro tick bug, by the way. Okay. So here we go. So these guys are pulling it and here's your queue entries showing up in here now. Isn't that neat? That's all there is to it. And now you've got your speeds for your clients right here. It's kind of cool. 
Hey, PC3, can't find DHCP server. Let's try that again. Yeah, you can do it. GNS3 can be a little buggy. There we go. Let's see if we can get rid of the always broadcast and fix that. <sighs> Don't you love virtual labs? Look, it's like virtually connected straight there. And it's not pulling it. No conflicts or anything. It's just buggy. But anyway, don't worry about that. This is just software for a lab and demonstration. I mean, like, I could have just, uh, pulled this guy out and put a bunch of shit on my desk, but I don't like messing my desk up with that stuff. I mess my desk up with other stuff. You see? It's, uh, I mess my desk up with that stuff, not the, not that. All right, so anyway, there we go. That's basically all there is to know. Um, DHCP servers are relatively simple. They can be secure. They could be really, really handy. It is the simplest, quickest, dirtiest way to actually uh, get your network up and running. And there's nothing wrong with using DHCP for authentication. In fact, many commercial softwares like PowerCode and Sonar and Visp uh, or other, uh, Azatel, Splink, whatever, all the other ones out there, uh, they have to have DHCP authentication as a, um, a method of connecting devices. And a lot of them actually use the hotspot feature of the Microtik when they're talking to Microtik routers uh, in conjunction with the DHCP server. True distribute IP addresses. But um, anyway, that being said, there you go. Hey, I want to try an experiment, by the way. Let's do this. Ah, look at that, which makes no sense, because look, God, that's annoying, eh? I'll turn this back on, waiting. It took it that time. Woohoo, that's a GNS3 bug. And look, the Q entries are there, isn't that neat? There you go, there's a basic video teaching you some be uh, basic stuff about DHCP. Oh, one more thing, because we're talking about DHCP right now. <coughs> If you find that your logs are getting like borked up with DHCP stuff, you can simply go in here. It's like if you look in the log right now, you're going to see like memory, DHCP, DHCP, right? If you don't want to see DHCP stuff up in here, um, go info, right? You're going to add one down. Sorry, let me do that again. It shows up under the info section. I'm going to go down to add one. I'm going to choose DHCP and not. So not DHCP. So now that will exclude DHCP stuff from the log. And then you can create a new entry, for example, like watch this. Um, you can create a duplicate disk entry or you could just save it to disk if you want. Cool, dinner's almost ready. So I can take DHCP stuff here now and I can say um, so, and I can send that over to disk. So I can create an entry to do whatever I want. I could also send it to remote if I wanted to, right? The point is, is that this is a way to divert uh, excessive garbage in your log from, you know, the DHCP server, because it's not always necessary. So in a lot of cases, what I'll actually do is I'll cancel that in my log and you're gonna be like, why in God's name would you turn off a logging metric? Well, if we have problems with the server, I'll turn it back on, okay? And then I can take a look and see what's going on in the network. And nine out of 10 times it's an RF issue or some kind of a loop on a network, which uh, can happen if you're not running spanning Tree, but spanning per tree is so fucking important. But yeah, that's really all there is to it. So there you go. Uh, there's a basic video on DHCP for you guys. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment below. And if you want to join the Patreon and help us out, by all means, please do. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll catch you later. And uh, yeah, um, uh, my eyeballs itchy. Bye, guys.